We had some technical difficulties, you guys. Sorry about that. I thought I'd be able to go in and just... Alright, hold on a second, you guys. I'm trying to figure out the Zoom thing, too. Uh, let's see, how do I flip the screen? Alright, so Zoom, we're good. YouTube, we're good. Alright, and now I'm just trying to fix. So I have my wife over on the computer. She's going to be asking the questions you guys ask in chat. Do you have any questions or everybody's logging in? Yeah. All right. So sorry about that rocky beginning. So this is my little cake spinner. It's just a, a cake spinner, really, a Lazy Susan. It's uh, in my description on... Uh, in my It's in the description on YouTube. So... A lot of you always ask me questions on how I stick the canvas onto the spinner. And normally I will just take two pieces of painter's tape and I just make a loop with them, stick them on the backs of the canvas. And then when I line it up in the center and stick it, it shouldn't go anywhere. Well, it does. Whoops. Well, hopefully you're not flipping it upside down with wet paint on it. But, yeah. So I would be able to spin it, and it's not going to really go anywhere. I'm using a different foil than I normally use the grill foil, just because it's wider. Um, another thing that you guys ask me quite frequently is, what is that tub that... I paint in and this is just a water heater tray and I you know set my little spinner in the center of it I got it from Home Depot or Lowe's it's just a large water heater tray it catches all the paint so it prevents a lot of the mess and then it doubles as I can actually peel the paint out of this and have a skin because I use my leftover paints to make jewelry and whatnot. So that's how I get my skins. Excuse me. A couple other questions. Where's my little piece of paper? It's probably under this, right? Right there, underneath? Yeah. <clears throat> All right. Somebody asked if that was a homemade Lazy Susan, but no, you bought it. No, I bought it off of um, Amazon, and the link uh, is in the description. It says, like, My Spinner or something like that. All right, what is the tub? How do I mix for most of my pores? So for most pores, with the exception of, like, Bloom and, like, a tree ring pour... For like flip cups, open cups, the majority of all the pours I do is uh, mix two parts of this pouring medium to one part paint. And I'm actually going to mix it on screen and give you a demonstration of like what the trace looks like. Because that's like one of the most important things is mixing the paints to a uniform consistency. So I have my little three ounce cup. And I have this permanent green from Amsterdam. Now, I don't measure anymore. I, I used to, but I've been doing this for so long now that I kind of just can tell. So like, if you can see that that's gonna be one part paint. I'm trying to hold it so everybody can see it. 
That's one part paint. To two parts pouring medium, just about. And it doesn't have to be exact. I'm just still doing those basic ones, right? I just oh, have this left. Okay, I guess we're going to answer um, from Scott. So when you see a project go horribly wrong, do you trash the canvas, or is there a way to recover the canvas? If it's going that bad, I will typically try to scrape the canvas and drop the colors back onto the canvas and see if I get a better result that way. But a lot of the times, I just go with it. And by the end of the process, I end up with something that I am kind of happy with at least. Because there's a bunch of different ways you can alter your work while you're doing a pour. So we'll talk about like for an open cup. I have a little, little open cup here. So for an open cup, you can fill the cup, layer it, and lift it or you can lift it and twist it. You can lift it and move it to other parts of the canvas. So you can ultimately change the way the whole painting is gonna look. Sometimes I have, so this is the coconut milk hair serum that I use, it's OGX, it's a hair product. I get it from any department store or like Walmart, or Target, any of those places will have that. Uh, sometimes I'll use a little bit of the oil on the inside rim of the bottom of the cup that I'm lifting and it helps introduce a little bit more silicone to the paint. As I'm lifting, the paint's churning and pushing against that silicone and releasing it out. And it really helps with cells, but there's a bunch of different ways you can kind of adjust your painting as you go. So that way you're happy with the result. But if it is a nightmare, yeah, I'd scrape it and maybe start again. So this is a pretty good consistency for open cup, flip cup, Pretty much anything that you're looking for sells. So I think you can see it pretty well. So I have two live streams going on at the same time for you guys. I have one Zoom and one YouTube. So I'm going to show both cameras. So there might be a little bit of space here where... So this is like a trace of one and a half to two. You can kind of see it creates a mound for about one and a half, two seconds before it goes flat again. This might even be a little bit thick for what I would want. And then for everybody over here on Zoom, hopefully you can see that really well. <clears throat> or wait, YouTube. YouTube, yeah. Zoom. Yeah, okay. That's YouTube. Yeah. This is Zoom. Okay. Yes. So that was the trace. That's how I mix for basically every pour I do, except blooms and except like tree ring pours or something where I'm trying to get really sharp defined edges or prevent a bunch of color mixing. If I was trying to do those, those mixes are going to be considerably thicker because it's going to prevent them from mixing too much with all the other colors. Ready? Mm -hmm. Selvin loves your work, Mr. Sergey. He wants to know if this is a profitable business to get into. Uh... Profitable, I would say no. <laughs> um, I mainly do this just because it's an outlet, it's a therapy for me. And it has a byproduct of giving you a little bit of a residual income from sources. And I mean, I could do a whole dedicated video probably on different ways to try to monetize your art. That might even be a good idea if you'll write that in the notes, baby make a uniform video on how to we write that because I'll forget it um, and we'll talk about like affiliate marketing we'll talk about how to market your artwork how to get it out put it on sale some of the platforms you can use to kind of you know use it as a marketplace like Shopify that's what I use but I started using Etsy um, so I have a little bit of experience with both more experience with Shopify I like Shopify a little bit better the, the fees aren't as bad um, but yeah, so if, if I could do a dedicated video, if that's something you guys would like to see on ways to monetize your artwork. Melissa 
how did you get started with painting? Do you have other mediums you like to create with? Okay, so I got started with painting. And it's, it's a really sad story, so I won't go into it, but what I'll see if Baby can do is maybe link a video in that video in chat on how I started painting. Because um, I'd really rather not go into all of that right now. It, there's a lot of bad stuff and a lot of pain, and that's what led me to this process. Um, other mediums that I would use besides the artist loft pouring medium is let me walk around my table because it's all over there we got a little piper in here freaking out Hello. Hi, all right so Hi. sometimes i'll use this white glue this i'll typically use for ring pours or something where i want really nice sharp defined lines and limited amounts of color mixing the only thing that's terrible about that is the only thing that's not good about glue is a lot of times it's going to make it harder for you to make cells just because. And with glue, there's no binders in the glue. So you're essentially weakening the paint and you could have some problems where the paint kind of just starts falling apart. Or you'll have cells that start and then they just kind of blow up because the paint can't hold on to itself and it breaks. If you want to fix that problem, you could put, if I mean, if you want to use glue or or something like that. You can add some GAC 800 that'll help kind of um, extend the paint. You can even get some acrylic binder from Amsterdam and add that to the paint just to help it kind of hold together a little bit better. That way when you do your pour it'll be a little bit nicer. The only other medium that I typically use is Floetrol. Now Floetrol is just a paint extender. It's just, it uh, helps it self-level, also helps it extend the drying time. Uh, Floetrol also will, it helps create cells a little bit. What I would caution you to do when you go to buy your jug, right? And I have my little, um, what is this thing called? Pantyhose? Uh, pantyhose. Yeah, like little piece of pantyhose, little piece of stocking <laughs> with a rubber band, and it's sealed there because there's little lumps in here. So when you squeeze it out through this, it'll help strain it. But I want you to, before you even buy it in the store, open it up and smell it. If it smells like rotten eggs, then it's bad. Because Floetrol is, it can go bad. So that's one thing I would caution you guys towards because once it does go bad, it's pretty much useless as far as using it for acrylic pouring. But those are really the only two mediums that I use besides my normal artist lock pouring medium. And I love this medium. It's my favorite. So Cybercat, she's the one that emails, but she said, I badly need some tips on doing swipes. I try to use very thin paint with Floetrol and a drop or two of silicone for the swiping. I always seem to get very small cells. Thanks for any help. So a lot of the time, it's like the small cells, they're not a big deal. And a lot of the ways like I would take smaller cells and make them larger is I would do my swipe before I stretch the paint. So however I'm going to layer it, just have it layered maybe like in the center of the canvas. And then when I swipe across, it'll make the little cells. And then I'll put it on my spinner and spin it out, stretch it, and those little cells become bigger cells. Um, yeah, typically your swipe color is going to be thinner than the, um, base colors. So that would be something you could keep in mind too. The thinner it is, the easier it is for the, the cells to kind of open up on top and reveal everything underneath. But yeah. Darth said, hey King, greetings from a very snowy Quebec. So then... Um, Minakshi? I don't know how to pronounce it, I'm sorry. My question to you is regarding cell activator in the chameleon cell. Yours is the best. I saw you dip in silicone and dip on the canvas. I tried. Do you think it's my silicone? Uh, it could be the silicone. It could be, like, chameleon cells are one of those things that's, like, really, really difficult to get down because each different color, you have to mix it, like, slightly different. 
to try to make them all the same because all the paints are a little bit different consistency. Some of them are thicker and thinner, some of them, you know. So there's a bunch of minor adjustments that need to be made. Now, if you absolutely have to have chameleon cells, you can get artist loft ready to mix pouring paint like these in the in the bottles at michael's and there's something about these paints too the way they they mix them that does work very well for chameleon cells but typically when i mix it's always like a two to two and a half or three parts uh pouring medium this pouring medium to paint depending on the brand depending on the color but to kind of make your lives just really easy, if, if you can get a couple colors of this and do your chameleon cells with, with these ready mix ones, I don't know how they mix their paints, but they, they work really well. Andrea said, asked, can I thicken up ready pour paints by adding acrylic paint to it? Yes. I typically, like, if my paint is too thin, I will add a little bit more paint to it to make it thicker. Uh, you can also add some gel medium, which I don't know where my gel medium is. This might be that. No, nope, that's modeling paste. Yeah, so there's gel medium. It comes in a little tub, kind of like this, that you can add to it to thicken it up just a little bit. But yeah, I can't, can't find it over here. Yeah, Jay Marie was asking the same thing, how she can make a paint thicker, or he. Yeah, so whenever I'm thinning out my paint i'm always going to add more pouring medium if i need to thicken it then i'll add more paints or you know the uh gel medium and then um bartas sorry if i'm pronouncing it wrong do i have to mix water or can i just mix medium and paint so one thing to be aware of when you're mixing water with acrylic paint for pouring is like when i had my one part paint you all remember that the one part paint was very small amount in here. Now I can only get 30% of that amount of paint in water before I start breaking the binders of the paint and it's going to start falling apart. So I actually don't use much water at all in any of my pores. I will typically just use the pouring medium, my pouring medium of choice, and I'll use the pouring medium to thin it down. And if it's too thin compared to the other paints, then I will add more paint to thicken it up. Ashes asked, um, apologies if dumb are already answered, which nothing is. No, there's question. no such thing. The base for all of these different techniques, is it the same or change it? What it is, Santon House paint. Change it and what is it, Santon House paint? I'm so confused. The base for all these different techniques. Is it the same? Oh, okay, no. Change it, and what is it, Santon House paint? Okay, so there is a lot of confusion because the bloom technique is, is an acrylic pour, but it is like its own monster in itself. The bloom pours, they use house paint for their pours. Every other acrylic pour, you're not going to use house paint. You want to use acrylic paint in some form of a medium. And the mediums, like we were talking about, is either this Flood Floatrol or the normal pouring medium, or you can use glue. I think uh, Olga Sobi just uses water and probably a couple other things. I'm not entirely sure, but I, I know she says she uses water. So so you can use those things. You just got to be aware of what effects they're going to have on the paint. Rose is asking, have you ever done a blowout with a hairdryer? I have tried to do a blowout with a hairdryer, and it went horribly wrong. Because as a male, I don't have much experience with a hairdryer. So I think I had it on like whatever the highest setting was when I first tried it. This was a couple of years ago. And I blew paint all over the room. Because my paint was really thin. I was trying to follow somebody's recipe back then for Dutch pour. And the Dutch pour is really thin paints to begin with. So when I ran the hairdryer over it, it just blew paint all over the room. And it was just a big mess. But... I have done it with a hairdryer. Um, sometimes I'll use my little embossing tool. So I don't know if I can even show it to you because it's... But sometimes I'll use the embossing tool. It has a little heat to it and a little bit of airflow, but it's not as 
strong or potent as like a hair dryer. Good. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Francis, uh, we can use flat flow trawl instead of the artist love, correct? I think you used to use that. I used to use that, yeah, you can use flood flow trawl, you can use any medium, any of these mediums. The only thing you need to know is, is they all do slightly different things. So, like with glue, it resists a lot of cells. Like with school glue or glue all, that kind of stuff. It resists cells because it's just, it's thick to begin with. And it's really hard to thin it down to the point where it can get a whole lot of cells. It will probably make some cells, but it just makes it more difficult for you. So I would be doing like a glue medium for something like this, where I want really nice lines, not a whole lot of cells, but I want really good definition of the line work. And that's what I would use for something like that. Now for a different pour where I want like a whole lot of cells, kind of like this one, like tons of cells that go throughout. This I would use either the Artist Loft pouring medium or Floetrol. Floetrol aids in cell creation, so it's gonna give you kind of a little boost and help make more cells. But I absolutely just love the way this medium acts because when you apply heat to this, whether it's a heat gun or the torch, it just makes tiny, tiny cells everywhere. And the cells within cells, bullseye cells, all kinds of nice lacing and webbing. So that is why that one's my preferred pouring medium. Mm -hmm. Carla says, hello, Johnny, hey, everyone. Hello, Hi, hello. Kelly says, thank you for your service. Thank you. And then Carla, uh, she is talking to side work, sorry. Christina mm -hmm. says she loves your work. Thank you. And then just a horsey yells. She sets a great camera angle and she can actually see what you're doing. She thinks paint pouring is fun, but her whole life is she's a brush painter, so it's hard for her to use a bunch of product. And then Andrea is talking to Cyberpack. David asks, how many colors is too much artistically? Some say no more than three colors. You appear to use more than three colors. Okay, so when we're talking about colors. All right, so a lot of the times when I'm making my color selection, I'm, I try to avoid colors that are opposite on the color wheel. Because opposite on the color wheel, they cancel each other out. Which is, in, in the acrylic pouring world, is creating mud. I can give you a demonstration of like a red and a green together and show you that when they mix, they make a muddy gray brown color. But back to your question, and then I'll do the demonstration. When I go to pick my colors, a lot of the times I try to use uh, color schemes that have a whole lot of colors that are next to each other on the color wheel. So a bunch of purples, blues, maybe a little green, right? And then I'll throw in a red or a yellow. And I know I just said that colors opposite cancel each other out. And that's why when I pick my colors, I'm going to know that this violet and this yellow will not play well together. So I will layer a blue or a green between the yellow and the violet always to try to prevent those colors from interacting too much. Or I just won't use that color at all and I'll just switch to like a red. So, but that's how I pick my colors. I try to keep it to, it's either gonna be about three colors or at, at most I would do maybe five or six. I try not to do too, too many colors because then they just, it just opens up more options for the painting to, to get nasty and all muddy. So what was that, red and green? So we have some brilliant red and then the green that we mixed earlier. I don't know how well you're gonna be able to see it, but yeah, they look great together. They look really nice together, but as they're in the cup, and they're swirling around each other and they're on the canvas and you're stretching it out and you're mixing it it loses a lot of that red a lot of that green and it turns into a more kind of nasty muddy brown color so that's the only thing you really have to worry about when you're mixing colors together is know how they're going to act with each other 
and then take precautions beforehand so that way you don't get a whole canvas that looks like mud. All right. Poor Darlene. She says, hello, I'm from Michigan. So sorry, Darlene. Our kids are up there freezing. <laughs> hello, Darlene. Uh, Scott said I would be interested in how to monetize the artwork, but she said we're going to do a video on that. Uh, Lunit23, do you do other techniques like wandering straight pour? I have done um, wandering straight pours before. Uh, it's actually probably been a quite a while since I've done one, so I can't find one right now. But no, I've done them before. And if, babe, will you make a note of wandering straight pour so I can do more of them? Yep, it's in. All right, yeah, I'll do some more. I didn't realize I kind of stayed away from that technique a lot. I like my open cups, my flip cups, and my chameleon cells. Anna, will all of the products be listed with properties somewhere accessible after the Zoom? Which properties? You're talking about for the chameleon cells? Uh, I don't know if she just asked the question. Will all of the products be listed with properties somewhere accessible? Maybe all the products that you're using and showing on the video is my guess. She's asking if it's accessible anywhere after the Zoom. So she's not on YouTube, oh. but you have it all on your YouTube. I could... I, mean, I could it. type it up okay. and send a link to everybody that I have emails for. Okay. And I'll put a link to that document in the description of the YouTube video too. And it'll go to a Google Drive link and it'll show you guys like everything we talked about today, different techniques to use with different things and, and a lot of the questions. This live stream is also going to get chopped up into many videos. So with the questions, you're asking your questions and I'm answering them. And then I'll, they're going to be individual standalone videos too. And I'm just going to chop up this live stream to make videos out of it to kind of answer the questions for people on a more general basis. Okay. So then was like, just thanks for answering my question. He thinks a video on how to monetize your work would be very insightful. Thank you again. Um, cyber cats suck in some annotation theme. Everybody's loving it. Uh, Kathleen S. Creations, she wants to know how to monetize her art, and she thanks you for everything I'm teaching her, and your art is awesome. Thank you. Fred, so you so you shouldn't have paint mixed in bottles with Floetrol for too long, as I have noticed that smell after a while. Is yeah. that true? Yeah, that's true. Your Floetrol will go bad after a certain amount of time. You don't have to worry about the that with the glue or the normal like premium pouring mediums, but with Floetrol, it will go bad over time. So pre-mix paints stored in a bottle for an extended period of time will go bad if it's Floetrol. <clears throat> Buddy Danger, he's been a fan for a while and curious if you could do him a favor, donate him a picture. He wants to get into this art style. And he states, by the way, your sleeve is really dope. Did you draw them or have someone draw them? <laughs> oh, <laughs> well, thank you. Um, no, I got this done in New York and I just told the guy the idea and he ran with it. So I gave him all the creative freedom to, to do it the way he wanted. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you again. Thank you again. You're kind. You apply. You advise. Have a great day weekend i'm from australia i love australia i'm um, gonna go there someday hit the like button he deserves it hard boiled mahoney said that 21 oh, likes you. with 77 people watching oh thank you and then oops i just went up sorry uh hi somebody says hi gina so maybe virginia and then they have a lot of trouble with the chameleon technique what is the best pouring medium to use i have the coconut oil but it never works and so, there's two people asking that okay so for the chameleon cells the best pouring medium to use is this one with the artist loft pouring medium the level one pouring medium that's like at every michael's i don't think they have it at hobby lobby but i know it's at michael's if if it's not available on the shelves it is available on their website but that's the pouring medium that I use when I mix for my chameleon cells. Now, if, if you don't want to go through the pain of trying to mix each color to the proper uh, ratios and stuff like that, because you're going to have to tweak it and adjust it depending on where you live, the temperature, the humidity, 
and all that. But if you really just, you want to do chameleon cells and just be successful at it, all these um, bottles here that you can get at Michael's, the Artist Loft, uh, pre-made paints in the bottles, you can use these paints straight out of the bottle with no mixing at all and get pretty, pretty really good results with like uh, chameleon cells. But it is like a whole, there's a whole process of trying to mix the colors and adjusting them slightly here and there. And it's just a really big pain. So if you really just want to make them, I would just get those bottles. If you can swing it. Tamir Smith or Tamara Smith, however it's pronounced. Thank you. She donated. No, oh, thank nice. you so much. Um, cheers from Canada, by the way, from Catherine. Cheers. Hi. And Jill, I splurged and brought some Liquitex Effects Pouring Medium. What a difference. Do you use it? I've never even heard of it. Liquitex Effects Pouring Medium? Yes. I've never heard of it. I've never used it. So, no, I, I'd be interested. I'm going to have to look that up. Mm -hmm. And very scarce. Please do tutorials on gondola boats and ships if you can. Gondola boats and ships? I don't know what that is. It's boats? <laughs> okay. <I don't> <laughs> so, uh, Tamara, Tamara, yep. uh, she says, like I say, I love your work. It's very good. My son-in-law is a Marine. Always will be. I need help with some colors you make for it to stand out. So, colors to stand out. And oh, okay. Paint. So, like color selections? Okay. So, I'm going to go back to my color wheel. Hold on. Let me cover up this wet paint. Because now I'm going to get paint all over everything. All right. So, color wheel. I kind of like religiously go by this thing. Because you'll notice a lot of the time when I... Let me grab something that has decent contrast. I'm just going to grab this because it's here and I've already shown it to you. So it has decent contrast. So when I went through the color selection for this one, I know I wanted purples, I wanted blues, but those are two very dark colors. So I had to add some whites in here to, to give it some kind of contrast to help it stand out. Because all, if all that white was gone, it would just be a very dull purple, blue, just, you know, there'd be no contrast in it. So when I do pick colors for contrast, I'll typically use like a white or a fluorescent, especially if I have a bunch of dark colors. I'll use those dark colors and then a white or maybe a fluorescent orange, fluorescent yellow. And again, just keeping an idea, like if I'm using this violet and yellow, obviously they, they will cancel each other out. So I need to be careful where I put those two together if I put them together. But if I did use those two colors, I'd normally separate them with a white or a black just to prevent them from mixing too much. I hope that answered it. So the gondola, I guess they're the boats from Italy. Yeah. The, they, I, I just asked him if he could ask what he wants you to do with the gondola boats. Uh, so artist swap is Michael's label. So hello from New Zealand. New Zealand. Hey. Here, talk. What are the best alternatives if you can't get those brands in New Zealand? As far as pouring mediums or paints? Both, I guess, because it doesn't um, state. In New Zealand, I think they have something called... It's another type of Floetrol. I don't have any of it here. Uh, but I, I don't think it's a... It might be a flood product. I'm not sure. I will have to get back with you on that one. I can't speak to that just because I've never used it. New Zealand. So um, that's Amanda in New Zealand. A couple channels that might help you is I know Fiona is over across the big pond, so she probably has to outsource her products too. So she would probably have some insight onto like products that you could use over in that area of the world. Who else is over there? I'm not sure. Right. Yep, yeah, I'm not sure. Follow up question from Andrea on the flow trial going bad. Do you know what it does to the painting if you happen to use bad? Floetrol. If you use bad Floetrol, it's just, it's going to be lumpy and nasty, and it's going to have like this yellow kind of tinge to all the colors. Besides the fact that it's, it's going to stink, you're going to notice when you mix it with the paints that it's not any good. It's not going to have any really terrible effects on the paint besides not 
working properly. But if you strained it properly and you did all that and, then, and there's no lumps, it should come out okay. But I would just suggest before you even buy the Floetrol, try to open it up in the store. Here we go. They say, hello, you are frozen. Froze. Are we fixed? Uh, no, it's still... Smooth. It's a 30 second delay. See it? It says what? There's a 30 second delay on YouTube. Okay. So, right now it's it's showing that I'm live. Somebody says, yeah, it works. Okay. Hey, bye. <laughs> um, yeah, there's your hand. Okay. And okay, so did you... Piper. You finished answering that or no? Yes. Okay. Billy says, hello, this is amazing. And then Billy Lee Goodman also says, I don't recall, but have you ever done this with glow-in-the-dark paint? I have never used any glow-in-the-dark paint. Um, my experience with glow-in-the-dark stuff in general is it's more of a niche thing. It doesn't really work as well as I would like it to work. Like Her big face is in the camera. Oh, is okay. it? She's... She's rubbing her face on the tripod. You know? Oh, sorry, glow in the dark. Um, yeah, so I really haven't used glow in the dark paints. Um, I did start using a lot of fluorescents, which I do enjoy because I have my little black light thing for my um, UV resin, and it helps bring out a lot of those fluorescent colors. It's hard to see it with that light on. I don't. Know. Oh, it's I the, mean, you can see it's it like, this light. personally. Maybe this one. Here, I'll just turn it. Oh, you can see it there, kind of. But yeah. Now you go to the other camera. So, I, I mean, I do like using the fluorescent colors. Somebody's asking Amy, can you show the OGX coconut oil? Yes, I can. So this is the OGX coconut milk hair serum. Um, it's available at Target, Walmart, all kinds of stores. Even, I think Dollar Tree has it sometimes. <laughs> Yeah, she, she wants to be in the camera. She's a little hand, but maybe yeah. go closer. But this is all right. That's so perfect. I'm gonna Either hold side. it up to the, both cameras. Okay. But that is the coconut milk hair serum that I use, and you can see like we're getting low. We're gonna have to get more eventually. So adjacent colors cancel each other out. For example, yellow, purple, blue, orange, etc. Yes, and they would make this color. That nasty baby poop color. Hang on, I got a whole bunch of people telling us we're frozen. Okay, let's go to a frame. A frame, sorry. Hello, Jamal. Do you hey. cover the bottom of your canvases with painter's tape? If so, when do you remove the tape? I have an issue with the tape not coming off easily and sometimes peeling the paint off. Thank you much. Yes, uh, sometimes I will cover the back. A lot of the times I don't. The majority of the time I don't cover the back at all. So I've been, here, I'm just going to grab some that I've done and show you, like the paint's probably all over the back and that's fine. But like, normally I don't cover it at all. Sometimes, like this one, I didn't even remove the tape yet. It helped it stick on the spinner, but it never really gets too messy here. And then a lot of people really don't care what it looks like on the back because it's something hanging, you know? But, you know, I'm trying to get it so that reflection's out of there. But no, normally I don't cover the back with anything. I just enjoy the process and let the let mess Lisa be the mess. Pigs, sorry, pronounced wrong. Send us a loan from San Bernardino, California. Hello. Can you use regular acrylic paint or do you have to use paints like Artist Loft? Uh, no, you can use normal acrylic paints. It's just I wouldn't use the house paints. Because the house paints aren't made for that kind of thing. They're not made for them being poured out on a canvas and stretched and moved and manipulated in that way. But it doesn't have to be artist loft paint. It can be any kind of a paint. Um, I have some craft paints over here. Let me get them out so you can see what I'm talking about. And while you're talking about that, somebody's asking too, David, is hobby acrylic paint okay to use? So while you're talking about all that, you can answer that. Hobby acrylic paint? So... When you're saying hobby acrylic paint, I'm assuming you're talking about little bottles, kind of like this. You get these at Walmart or Dollar Tree or something like that. Uh, Michaels. So yeah, you can use these craft paints in your acrylic pores. Just know that these are way more fluid than this. So when I'm talking about recipes, uh, 
here, here's this going to blow your minds, I think, a little bit. All right, so when, when everybody is talking about a recipe for their acrylic pour and everybody's got their own and theirs is always the best, but I want you to just kind of just try to get the recipe out of your head. The only thing that really matters is the paint consistency. So this is basically, these craft paints are always kind of like a fluid paint. They're already almost ready to pour straight out of these bottles without mixing it. A lot of people probably are under the impression that I need to use two parts pouring medium to one part paint that I'm using. So with this, yes, two to one, because this is much thicker than this. But these are already really thin, so I would mix the pouring medium with this at maybe a one to one, maybe a little less. The most important thing is if I'm using all three colors, I want them all three to be the same consistency. That's all that really matters. The recipe, it doesn't matter. Um, if you are going for cells, you want it to be a little bit of a thinner consistency, maybe a one second trace. If you're going for no cells and you just want really nice, sharp, defined lines, then probably like a two second trace. So a little bit thicker. Now with the craft paints, to thicken them up, you can't add more paint like you can this. With these, you would have to add some kind of a gel medium or something like that to kind of thicken the craft paints up. Um, but yeah, that's, that's that. And a lot of people are saying, hi kitty, hi kitty. And oh my Lisa's, goodness. Um, can you tell your kitty they're a good kitty? So Piper, you're getting a lot of highs. Hi, Piper. <laughs> David, I don't know, that's all I have to acrylic, sorry. Summer, is there any other silicone you can use? Yeah, you can use, um, the blaster silicone and the aerosol can. You can use the treadmill silicone. Um, um, basically any kind of silicone or dimethicone you can use. You just want to be sparing with it. Like, so in a three ounce cup of paint, I only put maybe one to two drops of silicone in there and that's plenty. So that's all. I, when I first started, I thought it was like one of them things. If I add more silicone, it'll have more cells and that's not the way it works. If you had too much silicone, it's just, you're going to have an ugly canvas that has a bunch of bald spots and bare spots. So yeah, just be sparing when you're using the silicone, but you can use anything that has like a silicone or a dimethicone in it. Cybercat loves that green one, the green picture that you showed. Oh, love. thank you. Um, Martin, hi from South Africa. Hello. There's no flow trough there. So what can they use instead? So, shoot. I know. <laughs> no um, <flow> <laughs> So you could use school glue, you can use glue all for a pore medium. You can still get cells, it's just harder to get cells. Um, you can use, shoot, I mean, I'm assuming that you'd be able to get pouring medium at an art store, I don't know. I've never been to the Africa, so I have no idea. I apologize for my ignorance. I will try to figure it out and definitely get back with you on that. Martin in South Africa doesn't have flow chop. Uh, Billy loves the green one too. Not everybody loves the green one. Oh, Jay hold on a second. Okay. And then Baby. Feathered Dream Studio. How much did you have to modify your techniques? Just give me one second. Oh. So I wanted to answer the, the question from Africa, at least give it them something to work with. Now there's another, there's a bunch of other content creators that don't live in the US. So I know Shelly from Shelly Art is one of them. Fiona Art is one of them. They live in Europe slash Australia on that side of the world. So maybe on their channels, they would have a better idea of materials you can use in that part of the world. And that's, I, I just wanted to give you some information and not just be like, yep, I'll get back with you. And, but I would say try to find those channels and maybe like dig into their description and they, they'll normally tell you like the products they're using. Okay, sorry. That's okay. Um, I'd be curious if you could find odd shaped canvases, that would be cool. Odd shapes? Yeah, they, they make odd shaped ones. They're just more expensive, that's all. And they're more niche because when people are thinking about artwork and stuff, they don't really think of like a heart shape or a star shaped canvas or anything. So I just typically go on the rectangle shaped ones. 
and just let the paint do what it's going to do. Okay. And then um, back to Feather Dream Studio, sorry. So mm -hmm. how much did you have to modify your techniques after you moved to a dryer climate? I had to modify my techniques quite a lot because uh, everything in Michigan and when I lived in Detroit, it would take about two days, maybe longer, sometimes like three days to dry completely. Here in Arizona, everything dries in like one day. So there is a couple of techniques that I still haven't even been able to figure out yet. I'm going to grab a couple of these tiles so I can show you. I think I'm going to grab them. See, I cleaned and now I can't find anything. Anyway, no, uh, they're not here. Okay, so like with the balloon technique, the cell activator for the balloons is very thin, whereas the paints underneath are very thick. And that's a big problem here in Arizona because the cell activator dries out really fast because it's so thin. And then the paint underneath dries out slower. So when the paint on top is dry, which is all the lacing and webbing of the bloom is dry, and the paint underneath is still drying, it takes all those dry spots of those lacing and the seams and rips them apart and cracks and crazes and makes them all crazy looking. I was trying to find one so I could show it to you, but... Which one are you looking for? Like those bloom coasters that we did with Andrea and all them. Oh. No, those, are, those got oh, resin on them. I put them somewhere and I don't... I think we could have released yours. We might have. Okay. But yeah, so a couple of techniques had to change um, as far as like flip cups, open cups, straight pours, stuff like that. No change is really required. I just enjoy a much faster drying time. Mm -hmm. Christine is asking, is Floetrol different to pouring medium? Floetrol is different to pouring medium because uh, Floetrol has no binders. So when you mix this with paint, you're ultimately like weakening the paint. And this will help you with a little bit of cell creation. But normal pouring mediums, they have acrylic paint binders in them already. And it helps uh, keep the paint more cohesive, doesn't tear apart. So that's mainly the difference between the two. And then Billy... Can you do this on, say, just paper or cardboard or anything else, or does it have to be canvases? No, you can you can pour on pretty much anything. You can pour on cardboard, the little thin canvas panels, um, even. Now, this is something that you might you guys might actually be interested in. You could actually paint on canvas or document protectors. So all you would really need to do is get some canvas panels. I'm going to pretend like this cardboard piece is a canvas panel, right? You just need something that's not absorbent and will keep it rigid enough for the paint to be there. So for those of you that like to make jewelry, this is perfect. So I'll put a piece of stiff, rigid cardboard or anything into this empty document protector. I can take it, let's say I have a spinner, let's say you have a spinner at home. Take a little piece of tape and double it up. Put some tape on the, to the back so it holds it down and then put it on there. And now I can pour on this. It's a nice rigid surface to put it somewhere to dry. This cardboard won't absorb the fluid that's inside the paint so it won't bow or warp. And you can paint on it, spin it, and then take it and move it to your drying area. And once it's dry, remove the cardboard, put it in something else, and you can peel this straight off and use it to make like jewelry skins or what have you. But you can paint on almost anything. Awesome, that was Billy. And so thank you so much for answering all their questions. Yeah, absolutely. Amy, when you are done with your painting, how do you seal it? So when I'm done painting, I will normally use some form of a varnish. So I got a whole bunch of different, here, let me move this out of the way. So I have these types of varnishes 
that they're not very difficult to work with. Um, I have an aerosol varnish too. I want to say it is Kamar varnish. I think this is it. No, Krylon UV resistant clear acrylic coating. So like when I'm varnishing a painting or protecting it or sealing it, I'll use one of these three. You don't need them all, just one. This is the easy way. You just go outside and spray it down. Make sure you clean all the silicone off first so that you don't get a bunch of pits and stuff. But once you clean the silicone off, you can use one of these three and seal your painting and it will be good to go. Martine from South Africa. Andrea just wanted to let you know that she found a paint conditioner, which is what Floetrol is, something like Oatrol. Yeah, Oatrol. Okay, that's Maybe what it was. She's I'm pretty sure that's what it was called. Yeah. So, Francis, I did try the blue technique and they turned out great, but the next day it was cracked. It was cold in the basement. I may have had too much paint on my wood hexagon 4 by 4s How can I prevent that? Uh, so the best way to prevent cracking and crazing is mixing some GAC 800 in with your paints. It's going to slow the drying time and it's going to make it so hopefully those paints won't crack and craze as much. But like this is the product I would use if I'm trying to avoid cracking and crazing is just GAC 800. And I would mix a little bit of it in with my paints. Follow the instructions that are on the back. I tell you about how much to use for each colors, like each amount of color. And then that's how I would try to prevent cracking and crazing if that was becoming a big problem. Jock Defender says, may I ask a cow super beginner questions? Yes, you can. If it is easier, I can send to website or Instagram. No, you can you ask me. once sent me info about the pendulum. You even went the extra mile and included how to install. Yeah, I did a pendulum video a few years back on how to make it and put it together and stuff. Is that what they're talking about? I don't know. Just they ask if they can ask some beginner questions. But yeah, you can ask they questions. Can send it to the website or Instagram, they can ask it here. Yeah, ask it here. That way, because where you have a question, somebody else might have a question, and we can get it all answered in one form. And then, um, just a horsey girl, Gail. Mm -hmm. uh, I did a pour on a flat board canvas, and would it dry? The stiff back bowed, and the canvas pulled away from the backing. Not a fan of a flat canvas. Yeah, I don't really like the panels myself, but they are good to experiment with. Another thing that's good to experiment with are like ceramic tiles. Like, I get these tiles from Lowe's or Home Depot, and if you want to experiment with, like, random techniques, you can always pour on the ceramic tiles. Now, I put resin over the top of these because <laughs> baby poured these, and I wanted to protect them, so there's resin on these. But if I wanted to just do an experiment, I could pour on the tile, let it dry. If I liked it, cool. If I don't like it, take this, put it in a, a bowl of water, and then I could, the paint will just peel right off the front and I can use it over and over and over again. Amy said, thanks for answering the questions. Your paintings are so pretty. Thank you. <clears throat> Dr. Bender did state, um, I can get my husband to help or install the pendulum, so I may have to go without it for now. Warning what Lazy Susan is size you recommend. I bought my back, so I have missed a lot. Need to catch up. Okay, so. She's the key. She's the queen of typos, and she apologizes. But mm, what are what lazy Susan and the size you recommend? Uh, the lit. I don't know what size this one is. Technically, what I could do is put a canvas on it. Tell you how big the canvas is. And I put the piece of paper on it because the piece of paper is eight and a half by eleven. Oh wait, I have a ruler. Better way, got a ruler. I got a ruler, but the link to this spinner is in every description of every one of my videos. Oh okay. But I'll still measure it and tell you about how big it is. Um, and thanks for all the tips people are saying. So this is 12 inches, which is big enough for anything, really. I mean, if you think about it, if I had a really large canvas, I could still kind of make it work. I'll show you how. This was going to be 
a project. I just haven't started it yet. And there's cat hair everywhere. But like even something this big, this is way too large to fit on. You probably can't even see the whole thing. But it's like compared to the spinner, this thing is ginormous, right? Well, what I did was on the back, I took a panel board and I take the panel board to give it something rigid to sit on. So now I could sit this on my spinner, tape it down, and paint something very, very large on a little tiny Lazy, Su Lazy Susan. Oh yeah. And that's that. Scott, I recently learned about acrylic pours from one of your videos. Totally new experience to me. I've never done acrylic pours, but I'm interested in giving it a go. What is the best way to start? Buy the course. I'm just joking. No, yeah. That's the best way to start. <laughs> best way to start is just to do it, to be honest. Um, I would go get some really cheap craft paints and some document protectors and you probably have cardboard at home or, or something to put in it that would be rigid and go get some craft paints, the little paints in the bottles like I was showing you earlier and uh, just give it a whirl, just practice, mess with things, experiment, like this is a craft paint too, the deco art. Um, yeah, just experiment. That's all I could really say is like practice it, try it, mess around with it, have fun with it, that's the biggest thing. Just try to always have fun. If you're not having fun, then take a break from it for a little while. But there's no reason that it should be frustrating for you. Okay. Thanks for the tips. Okay, thank you for answering. I have some GAC 800. I can do that with house paint polyurethane mixture, question mark? Can I do that with house paint polyurethane mixture? For none of my acrylic pores, I ever use house paint. So... Uh, the only pour that I've ever used house paint was the bloom pour. Everything else I use is acrylic paints that are either in the tubes or the bottles and mix them accordingly. So I'm assuming if you had issues with cracking and crazing with your house paint, yeah, you probably could put the GAC 800 in there and it would help you with the cracking and crazing. I sometimes run out of paint. Do you have a paint to canvas ratio? So I'm not wasting paint. I do. It's just, it's on my phone and my phone is right here. And you guys are. So, um. On the little canvas, maybe show them just a cup so how much you fill it. Yeah, but it's different for each size. And I don't have each size. No, just like a more normal one. Oh, okay. Uh, I'm going to find it. There's a table. If you Google acrylic pouring paint calculator it'll take you to olga sobe's painting calculator and you just put in the length and the width and then how tall the sides are and it'll tell you how much paint you need because there's differences in like this is a gallery wrapped canvas so the side is really tall and then this is just like a normal canvas so depending on the canvas you use and the size you'll use different amounts of paint but yeah, I would I would just go to go go uh, Olga Sobe's acrylic pouring calculator, and it's it's just too good of a tool to not use. Good, mm -hmm. Anna. I would like to make a small tabletop using your pour method. What can I use to make a durable surface thick enough? Thick enough? Maybe holding the paint with a tape around it. Is that what they mean? So I'm assuming she wants something large enough to where. It it won't bow or warp. Um, you could probably go to Home Depot or Lowe's and get a piece of like MDF, like the thinner or maybe a little bit thicker MDF and prime it first before you pour on it. So if you prime it first, it'll seal it. So that way, hopefully it'll prevent any moisture from going inside of it as the paint dries that you poured on it. But that's something I would maybe do if I was trying to do a tabletop. Kelly, oh, shoot, a lot of questions coming in. Uh, anyone else having trouble varnishing with Minwax polycrylic gloss? Having used PVA glue as a pouring medium, my pieces crack. No, I've never done that. The only um, 
varnishes that I use are the ones that I showed. They're either these two liquid ones here or the aerosol. Now, before I varnish anything, I always clean it because, I mean, there is silicone residue in my painting because that's what created all these cells and whatnot. So I would have to go through and clean this really well and make sure that it doesn't reject the varnish because it'll, it'll do the same thing as resin does. If it encounters oil, it pulls away from it and you'll end up with a bunch of pits all over the place. But as far as the cracking of it, I've never had that happen. Dr. Thunder, really sorry that you broke your back. Um, thank you for watching his channel. Uh, and of course, ask all the questions that you need to so we can help you. Um, Russell, hello, my name is Russ from Texas. I love your work. With all the different styles of pores, how do you determine what consistency of paint to use thin, thick, or medium? So, as far as to make it a little easier, for like open cups, flip cups, straight pours, swipes, I would use two parts pour medium to one part paint. So it'll be on the thinner side. I would, it's probably about this consistency as far as trace. Here, I'll bring it up to each camera so you can see it again. But this is like a really good consistency for open cups, straight pours, flip cups, swipes. It would have to be thinner for a Dutch pour and it would have to be thicker for a balloon pour. But for 90% of the pours out here, this consistency would work just fine. Uh, if I was doing something where I want, like I've showed you already, where I want the lines to stay, I don't, I don't want any color mixing or blending, and I want really sharp defined edges and lines, I would use a thicker, so maybe a two second trace, and then for bloom pours, it's a totally different animal. It's one of the most expensive pouring processes there are just because there's a whole bunch of mixing of really strange compounds together to get it to work. But yeah, from the majority of acrylic pouring, I use like a two-part flow, flow trawl or two-part pouring medium to one-part paint. And Kim, just ask, where do you buy your large black container you use when spinning pictures to collect the excess paint, which... We talked about that, right? The water heater Yeah, tray. we talked about it. We might have jumped in late. That's okay. Yep, the water heater. So this is just a water heater tray that I got from, Lowe's or Home Depot. I think it was Lowe's or Home Depot. I'm not entirely sure which one. I think them on Amazon. I think you put a link. Yep, they have them on Amazon too. Uh, but this just sits under the water heater and collects tra or w the water that might leak out. That's all. But it is also perfect for a crow. Can you kind of lift it so they can see the side? Oh, yeah. The side of it? Oh, here you go. Yeah, they see the thickness, yeah. So... I, oh, the name of it. Here's the name of it. Plastic water heater pan. Okay. <laughs> and uh, so you, everybody can see it. I'm trying to get it on Zoom and everything. So. Berkey Bay, thank you. You caught a live. You're so happy. Happy Saturday, everyone. Where's? She normally doesn't catch lives. Uh, but it just says, just read it. Plastic water heater pan. Yep. Plastic water heater pan. Yep. <laughs> Twenty-four inches by twenty-six inches. There we go. Smarty Hardy. I struggle with getting cells even with using the coconut hair serum. Could it be the thickness of the paint? Yes, it probably is the thickness of the paint. It sounds like your paints are too thick. Um, so maybe add one more part of whatever medium you're using to the paint to thin it out a little bit. And you should start seeing some kind of cells. Um... Dr. Fender, my incentive is to heal, to learn from this medium. Since I'm limited on moving, I think it is perfect. Do you have a beginner list anywhere I can copy or print? Are you doing any online classes? I definitely need help. So I do have an online course that's lifetime access. It's on the channel. It's in the description. Um, it's, it's pretty inexpensive for what it is. I think it's two and a half hours of just completely dedicated videos of taking you from knowing absolutely nothing to being able to accomplish a bunch of different pores, uh, tr being able to troubleshoot different problems you're having with your pores. It goes through color theory and color selection. It, it talks about cleaning all the oils off the canvas before you seal them. It talks about storage. It talks about prepping them for taking them to sell 
Um, but yeah, that course is great. Um, I also have a, a video on this channel that just goes through the basic bare minimum of things you need to get started. Because if you're like me, when I got started, I went out and bought all kinds of stuff that I did not need. And I mean, we're all on limited budgets, so saving money here and there is very helpful. But yes, I do have a video. I'll try to link to it in the description of this live after after we conclude. So you'll be able to find it easier. Uh, Kelly suggested to use an extra large doll crate liner if somebody doesn't have the tray. And then somebody said, Father Dream Studio, I work at Sherlin, Sherlin Williams and you have to use the minnow wax very sparingly or it will crack. When I have used it, don't really like it much. I would soak a towel in water and barely use it. Varnish is like work on me. And then Fred, he uses a styrofoam insulation found at the box stores. No, you can use it. I place it inside of the block and tape it to the frame and strip a velcro so it will And you didn't tell me. I've never missed an hour and I'm off to eat soon. YouTube didn't tell me. Oh, YouTube didn't tell me. No, it's okay. The live stream will be live. <laughs> Forever, so um, you can come back and refresh. And then game changer versus a puppy pool, bigger, flat space. Okay, we are. There's a lot of people just saying thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Mm -hmm. Um, think, is that your wife reading questions? Yes. Yes, it is. <laughs> um, She's and, also my manager. And yeah, and it's hard to manage him because he normally tells me no. So the online, Andrea said the online class is awesome. Helped me a lot. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Andrea. She was one of our, she was our first student. Yep. So, and she even came to your in-person Yep, she came to the in-person too. In Arizona. Mm -hmm. That is, oh, oh my God. Come on. Oh, they, oh they, um, they said, I remember when you were missing her because she was on location. I said she was back. No. Oh, yeah. And any idea when your tool that you designed will come available to purchase? It was a shame you couldn't share the 3D printer design like you wanted to. <laughs> so right now we're going through the patent process, um, trying to get it patented and then talking to production and seeing if we can get it mass produced and sold like inside Michael's stores and stuff like that. Um, you won't have to wait for the whole process. Hopefully we'll get the patent and get the production rolling on it. And once the production starts rolling on it, I'll be able to put links to it in the description and then people would be able to get them um, from there. I, I want it to be cheap. I want it to be inexpensive. There's no reason for everybody to spend an arm and a leg to do acrylic pouring, especially as a therapy or an outlet. Kelly asked, how long is your course and what's it cover? <laughs> okay, so it's two and a half hours of video. Nothing is reused, so it's not like stuff I recorded for YouTube and just put it on another site. It's all completely exclusive to the platform that I'm selling the course on, so it's just two and a half hours of, of video instruction that takes you through... Uh, flip cup pours that takes you through mixing your paints, color selection, mixing different types of paints, consistency checks, cleaning off the silicone off your canvases, protect, uh, getting ready to varnish, getting ready to sell, getting and uh, storing your work, how to store it so it doesn't get ruined. Um, there's a whole lot of stuff in that course. There's a whole lot. And it's, there's no cuts. So it's like, I will take you from me mixing the paint to taking that paint, putting it on the canvas, and then making that canvas look beautiful. So it's like a, a it's a very good course for people that don't know too much about acrylic pouring. So Andy's question is, in one, of your, in one of your videos, you hit a finished painting with your torch and suddenly lots of tiny cells emerge. I've been trying to duplicate that process, but can't figure it out. Yeah, this is that gentleman, right? Gentleman that emailed. Yeah, but we didn't answer it online. Yeah, I didn't answer it. I wanted to answer it on the video, so I'm glad that they're asking the question. Yeah, and then I've been adding more flammable liquids like penetrol and alcohol to the mix, hoping that it would work. But it seems like you only put a drop or two. Can you describe how I could make my formula so that the torch has a huge effect? Thank you. Yes. Your secret weapon will be this pouring medium. 
This one does it a lot. Floetrol does it a little, not as much, but this one does it a whole lot. So if you've used this as a pouring medium with uh, the coconut milk hair serum, you will get that reaction with a torch. Um, every one of those reactions that I've got, that was the pouring medium that I was using and I wasn't doing anything specifically different. It wasn't a special type of paint or a new silicone or nothing. It, I think it's just properties that are inherent with this pouring medium right here that are just help it help the cells actually form on top due to the heat. John, he loves your work. Um, I took your class. It was very interesting. I learned a lot, a lot, a lot. My question is that for the love of me, I could not get my colors to be vibrant. I try and use a color wheel and I even went and bought the same paints and medium that you use in our Bellager recipe. At this point, I'm starting to think it's probably the cups or the stirring sticks that I use because I can't think of any other reason why my colors are not popping. Also, your chameleon pores are outstanding. I'm hoping you might add that technique in the future to your course. I love this art form and want to get better at it. Okay, so I think part of what you're talking about is the colors kind of look muted after they're dry. Now, the only thing you can do, I hope you can hear, can you hear me right now? Yes. Well, you can, but can they? I can hear you on the um, oh, headset. Oh, the headphones? Yeah. Um, so, I'm looking for a painting that I have varnished right now. Because I want to show you the difference between a varnished painting and an unvarnished painting. And that's part of the vibrant color. Yeah. And that will bring a lot of the color back. Like, here you go. This will work. Okay. Now this one doesn't have as much contrasting colors, right? But you can still see it's brought a bunch of, with the varnish on there, now it's much more vibrant. All the colors are alive again. With this one, it's not really, it's not varnished. The, the paint is just a gloss. And you probably can't even tell, but there's gold accents that go throughout all of this. But if I varnish this, when I do get to the point where I varnish this one, all these little gold highlights that are going throughout will actually pop and come back. So mainly, a lot of the time, it's because when it dries, it's not varnished. So all the colors get a little duller. One thing to keep in mind, too, is the colors that you use, they're going to be lighter when they're wet and they dry to a darker color, slightly darker. So, I mean, you could always do a test beforehand, like take a little bit of paint and put like a smear of it somewhere and then see how it dries. And then you'll know what color it's gonna look like when it's dry on your canvas. Yeah. Catherine, thank you so much for your tip. And they sent a monetary tip. Oh, and then thank Kelly, you. Jango, be sure to plant that Meyer lemon tree. Moon Valley Nursery, they lived in my Mesa for 13 years. Oh, we sure. Will do that. <laughs> yes, we will. Nicole, hi. Do you have or plan to have a class for the resin geode boards with the crystals? Yes. We will do a class for that. I just don't know exactly when. If you write that down, I'll. I'll just start working. Are you, I think you're talking about the online version, not in person. Yeah, probably online, so it's step by step. So if you're talking about the in person, then just clarify so I know. But I'm going off the assumption you're talking about um, the online version. So David is not getting cell creation, and he uses Time for Crafts pouring acrylic paint and acrylic A, acrylic paint. The silicone oil is Montmartre. Montmartre? Montmartre, yeah. It lives in southwest Ontario, the wooded area. So they're not getting cells. Mm. That they, they use. See, I've never used Montmartre anything, so I'm not sure. Um, maybe try to make your paints a little bit thinner. I mean, that's normally my answer when people are having problems with cells, is a lot of the times it's they're either using like a glue medium, which makes it even more difficult to get cells, right? Or their paints are just too thick. So the oil cannot rise through the paint, pulling the colors with it. 
it's kind of when the oil is just like locked in place in there and it can't move because the paint's so thick. So just making your paints a little thinner should aid in creating some cells. Okay, Sue, I can't get chameleon cells like you do. What could be my problem? Uh, just really quick about the chameleon cells it is it's difficult to mix for because every paint has a different density and it's just it's kind of a nightmare but if you're really really wanting chameleon cells you want to have some success and not have to mix the paints yourself you can get these artist loft ready mixed paints in the bottle and these for some reason they work really good too without having to mix the paints so if that's what you were going to do, obviously just, just get a couple of those colors and try it out and, and then expand your color palette because they are a little bit on the expensive side where a tube of paint's like six bucks, those are like 15. Feather Dream Studio. So do you think I can have, well, Brooke and then Feathered. So do you think I can have a successful pour if I tried it on a cotton sweatshirt and then maybe if you use fabric paint would that be cool to try it would that work it may work I I honestly don't know I don't think I've ever used shirts or anything like that or uh, t-shirt paint the best thing to do is just try it and if it does work then maybe you came up with something new because I don't I haven't seen people pouring on shirts that's a great idea though Joel, is, do you have any autographed merch for your clients? Actually, me and my manager were <laughs> talking about that yesterday. <laughs> we were talking about make, maybe making some shirts and making them available to you guys um, if you would want to purchase one. So, yeah, I can, if you write that down, I'll start working on shirts or coffee mugs, I don't know, some something. I mean, just in the comments, or maybe people can email what they would like. Yeah. I don't know, like we can just do magnets. And I could do a community post, actually, if you'll okay. just, and we, they can all vote for what they want to see. Okay. Oh gosh, so it would be hard to get cells with glue, pouring medium, just paint mixed with water works, artist love, pouring medium works great, 70% off sales and some art products at Michael's Nun. Yep. Um, and then they plan on, they're kind of talking back and forth. Okay. Um, the paint sticks to their clothes, the sticks to hers too. Oh yeah, just paint on pretty much the all the clothes they have. paint works and it's gorgeous. Um, they're laughing at each other. And then Christine, how much do you think starting this craft will cost? It wouldn't cost very much. So. I'll just quickly go over the bare bones you need. I should have did this earlier when that, when they, I was asked the question. Um, so you don't need anything super expensive. So you don't need this specific Extreme Sheen brand of paint either, but DecoArt, Apple Barrel, all these brands in the little bottles like this, these are craft paints. They're probably like $1.50, I think, maybe $2 at Walmart. So get a couple of these, whichever colors you prefer. Uh, some form of, if you want cells, then I would have this on hand. It's still it's fairly cheap. It's like five bucks. And then, we're, like we were talking about with the document protectors and the cardboard. And then that's really all you would need to get started. Some paints, some oil, and this. Just to see if you even like it. How much do you think that would cost? I mean, like maybe some sticks to stir with these. Yeah, like uh, some cups and some sticks, sure. Like 20 bucks, probably 25 bucks. Okay, awesome. To, to get started with something, I mean, obviously you're painting on a document protector, but I mean, it's just to see if you enjoy the process, but without investing a whole bunch of money into all kinds of paints and crazy enough. Catherine, can you silk screen a painting onto fabric? I don't know. Silk screen. Maybe the off the deck kind of paint, the um, 
You know how you heal the peel? Mm -hmm. Maybe that? Maybe. I've never heard of it. Mm -hmm. I would have to look it up. So I'll, I'll have to get back with you on that one. Okay, I'll write that down. Rose is asking, do you varnish all of them? Yes. I varnish all my paintings after they've cured. And it takes about a full 30-day period for them to cure properly. And then i got to clean the oils off them. And once I clean all the oils off them, then it's ready to varnish. Renza is asking, do you think you upset other artists because you share everything you use? I hope so. Oh, stop. I mean, I don't hope so, but like... There's, I'm not naming anybody, but there's there's some people that they really like to hold on to their techniques and their recipes and their specific ingredients. And I feel like that's kind of pointless. There's no reason to hide it. Because if people want to figure it out, they're going to figure it out regardless. And why why make it difficult? I mean, for me, this is a therapy. And I'm assuming that for a lot of you, it's probably a therapy too. So why make it difficult? I'm just gonna give away all the information I know, and I'm gonna continue to teach whatever I can learn, and I'm happy with that. Becky, we are so sorry that you were on the other channel. Um, Becky said, would this be available to watch again? I spent an hour in previous presentation thinking it was the blonde and wonder why I'm struggling with my art. <laughs> um, yes, it will be on. Um... Yeah, it's gonna stay up. <laughs> It'll stay up on YouTube, and you'll be able to rewind it, pause it, play it, and... We literally could not click the link and go live for yeah, the life of us. We, I don't know why. It was not showing the go live button. It was grayed out. It went and let us click it. Yeah. So we are so, so sorry. Um, the art family is amazing. Um, if you use metallics, TLP pigments, you must varnish. Does that bring the painting to life? Oh, yes. Definitely. Because I've done a lot of paintings with, I know what you're talking about, with the, this little piggies, with these little powders. And once you paint with these, they look really nice when they're wet, but then once they're dry, they get really dull and lose a lot of their vibrance. So you do have to definitely varnish with those, or it's going to look muted. Somebody stating that um, they already would love journal covers, baseball hats, key rings. They love your jewelry. They would love for you to make a heart pendant, dog tags and dog collars, dog bandanas, and they love insulated cups for dog stuff because she owns a dog rescue. Oh, okay. Nice. And Thank you. And I think we can watch. Whoa, just had a whole bunch come through. Does mini wax polyacrylic work well for varnish or spray varnish? Mod Podge cracks on me. So I, I don't, I haven't used uh, polyacrylic to varnish. I normally use the Liquitex varnish or Josonja, or Josonia, I think it is pronounced. I don't know. But I use these or the aerosol, the, the UV spray to clear your coat and protect the painting. I, I've never used the polycrylic yet. I don't know why I haven't. I think there was a reason I didn't use it, though. Jade states, this is my grief therapy. That's what I started. I am glad that you found your painting, Jade, and I hope that this really helps you daily with what you go through your struggles. Well, thank you. Catherine, I hear your name mentioned by other artists all the time. This is how I discovered you. Nice community. Thank you. Um, Chameleon Flakes for Spendy. The what is Spendy? Chameleon Flakes. Are you talking about Micah Flakes? It just says those chameleon flakes are spindly. Did you show some kind of flakes? Oh, the this little piggy. Yes, okay. they are. They are expensive. I wouldn't. I wouldn't buy those unless you really know that you're gonna be doing this for a while because they are a little bit expensive. Can penetrol be used for the piggies? So the the one well the few times that I've used penetrol in the past, it's been as a replacement to silicone. I've never used it as a medium, um, so I would just use it in the same amounts as I would do silicone in paint. So I would just use one or two drops of Penetrol, and it, it does create cells too. 
thread. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I try resining my tiles and canvases, and I always seem to have pock marks mm -hmm. or spotting like it. Yep. Any great ideas will help. Okay, so tips to avoid that. Um, all right, so first thing first, after you're done painting, or even, I don't know, if you wear gloves while you're painting, you can wear them while you're painting, but during the cleaning process and the varnish and resin or whatever you're going to do, I would suggest wearing gloves because there's oils that are still in your fingers. So when you paint, let's say you use silicone, right? I'll just use this because I've been using this. I'll have a glove on so I don't put the oils from my hands back on the canvas and I'll go through my cleaning process of removing and stripping all the oil out of the canvas before the resin process. And then after I have cleaned all the oil off, and you can tell, like, if you hold this up to a light, like, so the light reflects, and you can see, like, spots maybe that look wet, and that's the oil still on there. So before you resin or varnish, just make sure you get all the oil off. Best way I found to, to get the oil off is I have, like, this whole convoluted process to get the oil off, but it works for me. Um, I use baby wipes first, and I'll wipe down really well the sides and the front of the canvas. Let it dry. Those greens are beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> and then I will take a cup and put half Windex, half water. Do the same thing, paper towel. Wipe it down really good. Still got gloves on, so none of the oil over my hands gets back on it. So I'm just wiping everything down real good let that dry um this last part is the the only part that you would need to you know be cautious uh, rubbing alcohol and water half and half take that get a little bit of that on a paper towel and you're going to wipe it across and it, look at the paper towel if it's stripping the color off then this isn't cured enough or you can't use that because it's gonna it's damaging the paint so you'll wipe it, you'll check every time you wipe. Then after that point, you should be ready to varnish it or resin it and not have pock marks or pits like you're talking about. Excuse me. I've been sleeping crazy the last few days. Left. Love brain artist Kelly's oh, on. And she's shoot. saying hello, and then everyone's saying hello to her. And hello. She's happy that she's here with the art community and art friends and family. So yeah. that's cool that she's on watching. I love him. I did say hi to her. Uh, the question Do you use a Windex with or without ammonia? Ooh, that's a good question that I would have to actually get my bottle and look at it. Because I don't know. I just grabbed the bottle of Windex. Let me see if I can find it in here somewhere. Oh no, I brought it downstairs. Uh, it was the normal uh, uh, ammonia free, I want to say. I think it was ammonia free for the Windex. What's up, buddy? Come on. And then, how do you clean your paintings? Ugh. I clean my paintings by basically just everything I had just said with the baby wipes and the Windex and the rubbing alcohol. Hey, buddy. Buddy. Yeah, he's being a good boy. Uh, he's a big boy. He's a big boy. Yeah. Don't use full charles of medium. You can use it as a additive with a drop or two per one ounce of paint. Mm -hmm. I don't know what I'm going to add on what I'm doing here right now. Yeah, so, yeah. How do you keep all the cat hair out of your paintings, laughing out loud? <laughs> I don't. They're not in here. <laughs> yeah, they're not in here when... When they're wet. Whenever, yeah, whenever anything... Oh my gosh, buddy. Whenever anything's <laughs> wet. Fact is who I bought for you, so you can look at Yeah, cats and this is my, my little man. I love this little dude. He's awesome. He's the best little cat ever. Okay, we have, like... Five minutes so okay. sorry really quick no no it's fine Focus. it's past two but we were four minutes late do you have any plan of when your geode resin class will be available probably within the next two months 
but don't quote me. Next what? Ne within the next two months, I'll have an online version of it made. It's probably not going to be as long and robust as the basic pouring course, just because it doesn't need to be. It's going to be completely focused on just making the mixing the paints and everything involved in the process for just geodes and everything you need to do them. So. And then, um, it's funny, the bucket lister, they just completed two paintings today, so I'm going to ask their question, but really quick. I freaked out to white pieces with rubbing alcohol prior to varnishing. The paint doesn't fade. I've never had the paint fade, and that's why when I wipe it, I check. And then if it is pulling paint off onto the paper towel, I'll stop using the rubbing alcohol because I know that I'm damaging the paint or it's, it hasn't cured long enough. Uh, the Bucket Lister, hi there, just completed two paintings today. Your videos inspired me. I ran into an issue where the different layers were mixing more than expected. I used your full child mix recipe. Say that again? The paints mixed more than... I ran into an issue where the different layers were mixing more than expected. I used your full child mix recipe. I'm not even sure how. Which layers? What technique, maybe? Are you using? Yeah, like, uh, what, are you doing? what technique were you doing? And where do you live? Somebody misunderstood something earlier and they're a newbie and they're super sensitive and super protective of you. So thank you for being super protective um, of yeah. JMO. But, thank you. Um, do you. Wow, that's weird. A question came up. I can't read it. Um, Oh, somebody asked if you like her toes and are her toe beans cute. The, they're talking about Buddy. Oh, Buddy's toes? <laughs> At first, when they said, do you like her toes, I'm like, what is going on? Yeah, um, so he's going to roll black beans. Okay, he's so, a good boy. He lets, uh, he the lets bucket me. lister, just... I ran into an issue with different layers we're mixing. Were you... Oh, maybe mix it in the cup. So, okay, so... Uh, oh, shoot. I uh, spilled paint everywhere. That green paint. Um, anyway, uh, let me see. Oh. I'm waiting to see if they answer. Um, oh no, they haven't yet. So, uh, I love your experience with alcohol ink. Will you do more? I will definitely do more with alcohol inks. I've been kind of getting back to basics, trying to help people with... Uh, the more common pores and then yeah i'm definitely going to be doing that again it's okay pink fluffy um my little else sorry if that sounded weird at first it sounded weird because i just read you like her toes before the oh the yes <laughs> i was like oh what <laughs> um and kelly left brain mm -hmm. branded art wait brain? left left brain left brain yeah. artist yeah okay sorry kelly um, JMO, you are truly inspirational. I have learned so much from you and enjoy your positivity. That's nice. Well, thank you so much. I and love you too, man. Somebody said, silly question. All toe beans are cute. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, that's kind of it. Drip test. Somebody said to do drip test. I think we are up to you. We just make sure there's no more coming yeah. across. What can I do to not let my edges dry funny? I checked and white drips often but my edges seem to be lighter colored uh, a lot of the time that's going to happen because as the paint flows over the side that the it's very thin on the side so it lightens up all those colors one way to kind of uh, compensate for that is maybe paint the sides with your background color before so if your background color is like a darker blue or purple or something like that then paint the sides of your canvas that color before you do the pour that way, it'll remain dark. Oh, man. That's a mess over here. It must wear. All, right, the, all that green paint that I mixed up? Oh. I, I knocked the cup over. Okay. And it's funny that Dr. Thunder said, um, the struggle's real with regards to pet hair or rescue, no matter what. I clean 12 hours a day here. It will still find its way to my outfit, coffee, and artwork. And I definitely agree. I don't know how. It sometimes gets in my coffee, but I'll find like one piece of mama's hair in there. <laughs> um, thank you for doing this. Don't yeah, absolutely. You You're really inspiring me to do acrylic pouring. Uh, so, yeah. Well, thank you guys for all being here. 
and Buddy's going to say goodbye, because he's the one in the camera right now. Aww. Baby. She passed away a few months ago. I'm, oh, I'm, sorry. I'm sorry, Jade. I know how that feels in terms of her baby. Mm -hmm. Hi from Australia. We're about to get off. Thank yeah. you. God bless. Thank you for saying that he's inspiring. Yes, Thank you, guys. Is. Have a good day. Oh, my gosh. I can't even really hit me.